In the Lab, a Texans podcast that takes a different look at things. Drew Doherty and John Harris have their lab coats and goggles on and the Bunsen burners burning. Here's Drew. Hey there. Welcome to In the Lab. Drew Doherty and the waving John Harris. My good pal, your good pal, our uh, good pal. John, I'm not going to say we have a hard job because... <laughs> You gotta have perspective about things. There are folks out there yeah. on the front lines, yes. You know, dealing with COVID. You know, first responders, all that stuff. We don't have yep. hard jobs. Yes. Kindergarten teachers, <sighs> teachers, teachers. Yeah. Yes. Any teacher, for that matter, we don't have yep. hard jobs. Sometimes there are little challenges within our jobs, and today is one of those because we do a podcast on a weekly basis about our favorite football team, favorite football team that employs us. Yes, And uh, it's tough to, to talk about good things these days because of what we saw on Sunday, what we've seen on the whole this season. Yep. So with that in mind, I was a little stumped. You were a little stumped on what we could actually discuss. Uh, as you hear, I don't know if you can hear that, but my, one of my dachshunds is coughing something. Man, that's, gonna, that's okay. I mean, it happens. Randy. I mean, in, in the year of COVID 2020, Drew, you, I mean, you just, you never know. And hopefully they're going to be okay. It's not COVID. He probably ate something stupid outside, like a <laughs> rat. Anyways, it happens. So we're we're struggling with what to talk about. So since it's the season, and you love Santa Claus, and I love Santa Claus, Ooh, and we all love yeah. Santa Claus, and Santa's coming to this house, I think, because yes. uh, there's been four little good boys and girls at at the yes. household, and uh, I think it's going to be a good Christmas. What do I want from Santa football wise? What do Ooh. you want from Santa football wise? If you could, if you could put an idea under the tree and wrap it up in a present, what would you like to unwrap the morning of December 25th? It could be short term, it could be long term, but what would you like for Christmas from Santa for your Houston Texans? Man, that is, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, I'd like to think short term and long term. Yes, let's do that. But I'm going to start stuffer, a stocking stuffer, and then the the gift that takes up half the living room. Ooh. One of those. Okay. Types, you know? Okay. Um, boy, man, now you got me thinking because I had a gift, and I'm trying to think: Do I want it to be my main gift, or do I want it to be my stocking stuffer? Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go. Okay, I'm going to go main gift. I'm going to think about my stocking stuffer. Here's here's my main gift. I want a travel corner. A what? Here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. Oh, a I know. Travel corner is a Jalen Ramsey, is a Tredavious White, who, by the way, I, I, I was reminded of this the other day. I think Tredavious White's hilarious. And he has started this. I don't know how he started it. But I guess because he's in Buffalo, he started to have this love for hockey now. And he has this Tredavious White goalie academy. <laughs> and, they, and so they showed last year on Sunday night, they played the Steelers at Pittsburgh. and you know, they do the, uh, you know, Drew Doherty, SMU, John Harris, Brown University. And he gets to Tredavious White. He's like, Tredavious White, or Trey White, Tredavious White Goalie Academy. <laughs> Those guys are travel corners. They travel with the best receiver on the other team. You just throw and, them out there. You leave them alone. You don't have to worry about them being a part of the game plan. It's right. Just do your thing. And yep. we'll let the other 10 worry about the defense. Darrell Revis, you know, those guys – and the thing about it is, you know, Darrell Revis was a top 12 pick. He wasn't like the top two pick or top three pick. Texans could have taken him. Yeah. But it's going to be somebody that can travel with somebody. Now, Bradley Roby has done it. And I think he's done it um, pretty, pretty well at times. But Robe's not a, not, a, not a big guy. And so sometimes bigger receivers, you're a little more hesitant in putting him on. But I think back to that Packers game, and Devontae Adams is just – I mean, he's throwing moves on guys. And I'm like, man – Darius Slay used to be on Devontae Adams, and they would battle one-on-one. -on -one. Jalen Ramsey, DeAndre Hopkins would go at it one-on-one. -on -one. Those were great. Those were great battles. Great battles. The Ramsey Hopkins battles were tremendous. Each Ramsey side would won get some. Each game. Yeah. Yeah. Ramsey would get some. Hop would win some. I mean, it was a great battle. But Jacksonville knew, look, we have somebody that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hopkins. And I feel like that's the kind of guy that – if we had a guy that could step in and say, you know what, I'm locking it down. Who you want it to be? You want it to be T.Y. Hilton? I got him. You want it to be uh, uh, DJ Chark, Jacksonville? I got him. 
if you team that kind of guy with Roby, then all of a sudden you look up and go, okay, all right, let's, let's give our pass rush some time to get back there because we got two guys that are going to make it very difficult for you, get the, for you to get the ball off exactly when you want to get it off. So is this your so, stocking stuffer or is this your big room gift? That sounds like a big Okay, you know what? That's going to be my stocking stuffer. That's going to be my stocking stuffer. Now give me a second to think about my main gift. Okay, well, I was thinking for my stocking stuffer, I was thinking smaller. Um, okay. But you're, you must live – you I must have grew up in a, in a luxurious household getting stocking stuffers like that. Yeah. My stocking stuffer, uh, we got those, like, cellophane packs of gum, you know, like a three-pack of gum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we got, like um, – you know, some chocolates. So my stocking stuffer, I'd like it to come early in the form of a win over the Colts and later in the form of a win over the Titans. It'd be cool to beat the Bengals. And yeah, I want to win every game, but I just really, you know, the, the chips are kind of stacked against this team right now. Yeah. But I'd really love to screw with those two teams. And I don't know how much yeah. it would really matter, but yeah. just seeing them lose and reminding folks that they're not world beaters, the Colts yeah. and the Titans, because some folks think that they are. So that's, that's my stocking stuffer. But I, Man, my stocking stuffer really pales in comparison to your stocking stuffer because uh, well, it would be awesome to have a guy like that on this team. Yeah. Well, I'm, okay. So – Pair him up with Roby? Yeah. But, but he, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna understand why – you understand why a travel corner had to go in my stocking because my big gift mm -hmm. is actually a – about half a ton okay and it is guard center guard the interior that will keep Deshaun protected for the next dozen years yep and, and it could be some of the guys that are already here it could be I some of the guys you, that are here it could, be some, it could be reconfigured a little different way potentially right. it could be that but I want about a thousand pounds, well, a little less maybe, of guys that protect Deshaun in the middle. Because look, with Titus Howard and, and Laramie Tunsil, they're you know those two guys are going to have to be the rocks on the outside. They're going to have to be the foundation going forward. And I think, you know, with Laramie, I, I think Laramie would tell you that Sunday was not his best day, but on his best day, Laramie to me is the best tackle in the league, on his best day. And I think Titus is on his way. I think Titus has got some things that he's got to work on, but you're not going to change those two tackles. No. The offensive line needs some help, and we need to run the ball. And it's not one of those, we need to run the ball through between the tackles, because the thing is, you know, when you think about the best running offense that this, this organization has ever had, Drew, you had an up-front up seat, and that was Wade Smith, Chris Myers, Mike Brizel, those three guys at guard center guard. Now, those guys were under 1,000 pounds, and – Arian ran it between the tackles because those guys did such a good job of just staying on blocks and keeping guys where they wanted to go. And then Arian, they not allowed Arian to make his cut. So I had to make this my big gift because I couldn't fit, I couldn't fit a thousand pounds into a stocking. Yeah. But I think going into, you know, finishing this year, going on into 2021, that's an area of the team that I think has got to be even better than it's been, whether it's reconfigured, whether it's the three guys that are there. But, you know, the other aspect, uh, and they've been kind of moving in different guards. One week it's Sharping. One week it's, like last week it's Quali. One week it's Kelamete. And I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to win games. So you're trying to play the best guy. But there's got to be a continuity in that five up front. And there have been times this year when that continuity has been disrupted. And then you can see there's been a communication mistake. And that's, that's been unfortunate. And so I want to have that continuity, but I want those three guys up front to be able to mash a little bit in that we find a running game, but we're not going to find a running game until we find the interior three that fit absolutely perfectly um, for this offense. And look, we don't know what the offense is going to look like. It might be a, it might be a LaFleur, Shanahan, uh, McVay-like offense. It could be something like what Andy Reid's doing. We, we have no idea what this offense is going to look like. But either way, whoever takes over as the head coach, offensive coordinator, is going to absolutely, without question, need to have that interior locked down. So I'm going to ask for it for Christmas for 2020 and let that bleed into 2021 and beyond. That's cool. I like that. It's a good gift. Um, I do think 
I think whoever takes over when that happens, I think the offense is, is going to get better. I think it's going to get yep. simplified a bit. And that's not, that's not to say it's going to get dumbed down. I right. just think sometimes like Occam's razor, simplest is the best. It's the straightest right. point. And I think that's going to just if, – like if you've liked what you've seen from Deshaun this year, just wait. I mean, just wait till he gets in a system it's that's going to be kind of catered towards him because yes. this system was in place before he got here. Okay, I love your, uh, your half ton of man muscle uh, there on the offensive side of the ball. You know what I want? I want a statistic. Ooh, ooh. I want on average next season. And, hey, you can start it on Sunday if you'd like and carry okay. it on throughout. I want 12 quarterback hits a game. Oh. Okay? Yes. That's, that's getting greedy, I know. That's okay. But I right. want to freak – I want to say the, the other F word. I want to mess with <laughs> opposing quarterbacks. Okay? Yeah. You'll get some sacks, yeah. You're not going to always get sacks. But if you get 12 quarterback hits, that guy's not going to be that comfortable. That guy's going to make mistakes. That guy is going to check down, and he's not going to check down and have the success that Trubisky had. That was – the defense will say that's unacceptable. We heard Romeo Cornell say it's unacceptable. But if you, if you make a quarterback do what Trubisky did Sunday – in most instances, you're going to walk away a winner by 10 points. But I want to get after the quarterback. We haven't seen it in a while around here. It's been about two years, really. And I want to make these guys uncomfortable. Uh, so give me 12 quarterback. That's, that's probably asking too much. But what we've seen from this, this defense, this front seven this year, has not been good enough. And you they've know had to get exotic because a lot of these sacks – think about it. A lot of these sacks have come from safeties, and that's nice. That's fun. That's cool. But let's get back to the bread and butter of the front seven guys, specifically the defensive line yeah. and the inside linebackers getting the quarterback to the ground. You know, too, kind of a kind of a corollary to that, Drew, is you know the the you know the Oilers House of Pain, Bulls on Parade, all that kind of stuff. I, that's not really where I'm going with this, but what I want is when teams see us on the schedule, they go, Oh boy, that's gonna be a physical ball game. Yeah. Like, they know they like, well, we better buckle up, man, because these dudes are going to hit us right in the jaw. And there are teams that you think about like that, the Ravens. Like when you think of the Ravens, whether, whether this is true or not, I mean, they gave up 42 points uh, last night, uh, Monday night. Um, but you think about the Ravens and you go, boy, I need my big boy pads for this one, you know? And like the rest of 2020, you kind of got to put an asterisk on everything. Like yeah. that Ravens, that's an asterisk Ravens team. Like what yeah. we're seeing right now. Yeah. That's a vastly different team than what we saw the second week of the season. I mean, just yeah. incredibly different. But it's light years away from what we saw from them last year, which I think was what, anyways. But I just, just want to, and, yeah. and let me be clear about this. I do think some of the guys that are currently on the Texans defense yes. can be a part in no getting doubt. more quarterback hits next year. You can see some development on the way. I do think there's going to be some new faces, though, that got to have and got to make that happen, too. So. Absolutely. And, I, and I'm, I'm with you. And I, I think that there were some personnel losses on defense that kind of took away some of the things you're talking about. Um, and I think it, 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 it kind of wore away some of the, the soul of the defense. I used to talk about Brian Cushing. You and I talked about Cush. Cush used to always be the soul of defense. Um, I feel that way about BMAC. And I think missing BMAC – and look, BMAC's, you know, not the, not the greatest inside linebacker has ever been. But for us – BMAC provided a physical presence and he was the leader in the huddle. You did what he said and then he rocked running backs. Um, and Reader, those, Reader the, was a big loss. It wasn't. Yeah. Uh, and Reader was, yeah. And that was another one. I said this the other day. Um, I was on with the Chicago Bears um, radio network in the pregame and they kind of asked me about the defense. And I just said, look, you know, we lost, you know, personnel losses really hurt us up front. I said, DJ Reader. Nardrick McKinney, I was like, those guys were kind of the soul of our defense, man, because they were nasty. You didn't move them, they rocked you. I mean, I remember watching the game last year, almost, the Colts game last year at home on Thursday night. I was watching DJ Reader go against Quentin Nelson probably more than I was watching the entire game. Mm -hmm. Because, they, I mean, Reader just knocked his block off. And they went at it. And I was like, that's what I want our defense to be. Guys that you know – it's just going to be an all-out 60-minute football war with them. And hopefully in those situations, our guys will come out on top because they'll get enough stops, and that gives number four the ball back, and he's, he'll do great things. John, this is a good podcast. Yes. This 
came from a, a, a spot and a place of wonder, of yeah. question. Yep. And in the final minute of this podcast, I'm realizing we should have done this podcast next week. And this podcast today should have been the Hanukkah podcast where we could have had eight gifts for the Texans because the Texans need kind of eight gifts a piece. So 16 gifts yes. right now. That's what we yes. should have done. So yeah. to all of you out there watching and listening, I apologize. That's what we should have done. We should have done the Hanukkah podcast for the Texans because we could have unwrapped stuff over the course of eight days. Yeah. And That's that would have been much, much better. Would have been like, have you, did you see the Smokey Robinson video? <laughs> I was just about to say, I was about to say Chanukah, but I wasn't sure if you saw it. So, okay. um, but to, uh, he didn't know, I bet you he knows about Hanukkah. He just didn't, he'd never seen the word. Yeah. He had never seen it like that. Um, so that was, that was kind of interesting, but, uh, yeah, to, to all of our friends out there, happy holidays, happy, happy Hanukkah, Hanukkah. Yeah, happy Hanukkah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, yeah. Everything. Boxing Day, is that coming up? Happy too? holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do this again. We'll do this next Tuesday. Yeah, we'll do it next week. Uh, hopefully, we'll have something fun to talk about, maybe a win. If not, we're going to talk about our five favorite Christmas movies all time Ooh. and our five favorite Christmas songs. So start that percolating in your mind, John. Okay. Listeners, right. viewers, percolate that in your mind. Hit us up on Twitter, at Doherty Drew, at J. Harris FB. So, uh, right? Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Of course it is. And it's in the top okay. five. All right. All right. Yeah. We'll see. Absolutely. See makes it. Christmas movie. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. Now I have a machine gun. All right. It's always good talking with you, John. Take care of yourself. See you again. All right, man. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.